Hello everyone, it's Mr. Spinelli. Today we're going to talk about finding the area of a rhombus and a kite. Lucky for you, they're the same formula. and Let's see exactly why. So remember a rhombus is a side whose, a shape whose four sides are all congruent and whose diagonals are perpendicular bisectors of one another. So these two diagonals meet at right angles. So all four of those angles are right angles because of the supplementary properties and vertical angles and all that jazz. So if I take a look at this diagonal length, I call D1, and the other diagonal length, D2, we're going to break this down into four triangles. You guessed it. So if I take a look at just one of these triangles, and I'm going to draw it kind of small, this length here would be half of D1, and the other side would be half of the other diagonal. So we know that when we find the area of a triangle, we multiply those two dimensions together. So D1 over 2 times D2 over 2, and we divide that result by 4. Well, sorry, not by 4, by 2. So this would be the area of one of those triangles. Well, if I multiply this out, I get D1 times D2 over 8. Now, I'm technically going to have four of these same exact triangles. That's why that number 4 came into my head. So the area of this triangle is D1, D2 over 8, but the area of the rhombus will be four times that result. And when I perform this, I get the area of a rhombus, which is the product of the diagonals divided by 2. So that is my formula for the area of a rhombus. It is also my formula for the area of a kite. And it's for precisely the same reason. If I look at my top triangle, forgive my shaky hands, if I look at that top triangle, the area is equal to the length, or the base, which is D1, times the height, which is half of D2. So D2 over 2, and all of this divided by 2, which is really D1, D2 over 4. But there's two triangles in this picture. So then the area of the kite is twice that area of the triangle on top, which is d1, d2, over 2, which is my formula for the area of a kite and a rhombus. So let's take a look at a few examples. So remember, the key is to find the length of my diagonals. That length right there is 8. And then if I look at the other length of the other diagonal, 5 plus 5 gives me 10. So my area is simply 8 times 10, which is 80 units squared. All right, the next one, I know the entire length going this way is 12. And I know part of the length of the other one is 4. So the other piece must also be 4. So together, they are 8 and 12. And oh my goodness, I forgot to divide the first one by 2. Forgive me. That should have been 40 units squared. Thank you to those who caught that. I'm sure you said that in your mind. So in the next one, I've got 12 times 8. Divide that result by 2, and I get 48. This time the units are centimeters squared. Now the next one can be a little tricky, so let's take a look at this one a little more closely. I've got one of the di diagonals is 14, but I don't have the length of the other diagonal. But what I'm going to do is actually sketch just half of that diagonal. Remember that the diagonals in a rhombus are perpendicular to one another. So then this length right here, half of the 14, is 7. So I need to find what this length here is. Well, one thing I could do is apply Pythagorean's theorem. 7 squared plus x squared equals 25 squared. a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Or I can remember my Pythagorean triples. And I remember 7, 24, 25. So that distance there is 24. 
Well, that means that one of my diagonals is the 14, and the other diagonal is the 24 times 2. So that other diagonal is actually 48. So the area of my parallelogram is going to be 14 times 48 divided by 2. Type that one in your calculator, you get 336 units are inches, so now the area units are inches squared. Next problem is precisely the same strategy. I want to draw half of the other diagonal, take half of the 10, and I get 5. And I remember my special triples. This is a 5, 12, 13 triangle, which means that my diagonals are 10 and 24 because I have to double the 12. Divide that result by 2. So 10 times 24 divided by 2 gives me 120 units squared. Again, please feel free to pause, slow down, rewind if some of this didn't make sense. So let's take a look at a few kite problems. So in these kite problems, I'm doing exactly the same thing. I need the length of my diagonals. Well, 2 plus 10 gives me 12. And 6 and 6 give me 12 as well. So then my area is 12 units times 12 units divided by 2, which gives me 72 units squared. Next one, it straight up gave me the diagonals. This length here is 38. This length here is 19. So my area is equal to 38 times 19 divided by 2 which gives me 361 units squared. This one, I've got another right triangle problem using either Pythagorean theorem or triples. Well, I remember my triples, so I know this is a 5, 12, 13, which means the other triangle on the bottom is a 5, 12, 13, which means that the length of this diagonal here is 12 plus 8 is 20, and the length of my other diagonal is 5 plus 5 is 10. So then the area of my kite is simply 10 times 20 divided by 2, which is 100 units squared. Now the next one is actually asking me to work backwards. It says the area is 48 feet squared. Solve for x. Well, it looks like x is this entire length right here, which is one of my diagonals. And I have to recognize what kind of shape this is. This is a kite. So I know a kite has the formula d1, d2, over 2. Well, I've got one of my diagonals. It's going to be the 4 plus the 4, which is 8. And I know my area. So I'm going to write my area is 48. I know one of the diagonals is 8. I don't know the other diagonal. And I have to divide that result by 2. Well. I can multiply both sides by 2. That gives me 96 equals 8 times d2. So then if I divide by 8, I get that d2, the other diagonal, which is x, is equal to 12 feet. So now lastly, I'm just going to do a few more problems to check our understanding of all of the shapes that I've covered in three of my most recent videos. So this first shape, I've got to recognize it is a parallelogram. Parallelogram is length times height. Find the two sides that are perpendicular to each other. That's my 4 and the 10. So 4 times 10. I actually wrote those backwards if you want to do. The length is actually 10, the height is 4, but that doesn't matter. So I get 40 feet squared. Next one, trapezoid. I need to find the length of my bases, which are both going to be parallel to each other. So add the 9 and the 11 together. That gives me 20. The other base is 8. But I don't know the height, because I need whatever's perpendicular to these sides. But what I do know is this is a 3, 4, 5 triangle with a scale factor of 3, because 9 divided by 3 is 3, and 15 divided by 5 is 3. So this height is actually 12. Okay, so the height is 12, 
So I'm going to do area equals sum of the two bases, which are parallel to one another, times the height, and divide that result by 2. And I get 168 units squared. Next problem is just a classic diagonal. It's kind of hard to tell what it's telling me in terms of the diagonal lengths. So let's pretend that just this length here is 12, which means this length here is also 12. So the entire diagonal will be 24. And let's pretend that just this length here is 15, which means this other length is 15. So the entire length will be 30. So then my, multiply my diagonals together, 24 times 30, and dividing that result by 2 gives me an area of 360 units squared. Now lastly, I've got another kite, which we just saw a bunch of those. Remember that area equals the multiply, the product of the two diagonals divided by 2. Well, if I add the 16 and the 12 together, I get 18. Since this length is 5, this length will also be 5, so my other diagonal is 10. 18 times 10 divided by 2 gives me 90 units squared. So just to wrap everything up, here are some formulas for five basic shapes that we will be covering. Hope you enjoyed. Have a great day.